it's Millie and thank you guys for jumping into the nook. Today I'm going to be filming a video I never thought I was going to be doing and that is a reading vlog of me reading the entire Wayward Children series. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I feel like a broken record when I say this. But if you guys have been here for a while, then you know that one of my least favorite fantasy sub-genres is contemporary fantasy, portal fantasy. I've just never really been a huge fan of it. I love my fantasy to be high and epic in a completely different world with a very kind of old-timey saga feel. And I love contemporary books, but for some reason when fantasy and contemporary worlds mix together, it's just not my jam. And over the last couple of years, anytime I pick up a book that's kind of a contemporary fantasy, low fantasy, urban fantasy, things like that, I just haven't really found myself enjoying these types of books. So one of the series that's most beloved on the booktube community is uh, Shauna McGuire's series The Wayward Children's, which is a collection of novellas that are all portal fantasies. So I have heard of the series for years now. It's been super popular. It's won awards. Everybody who reads it ends up falling in love with it. And I knew that it was just not the series for me based on my previous history with Portal Fantasy. However, if you guys recall, um, last year when I did my first round of the Hugo Novella nominations, the fifth book from the Wayward Children series was one of the six finalists. And so I kind of had to read it. Now I was told before from looking at reviews and things like that that the you don't necessarily need to read the series in order and that they're all kind of companion novels um, so I was like you know what I'll just read the fifth book for the sake of this video series I don't actually have to read the whole series so that's fine um, and then I ended up reading the fifth book and it was very like okay for me now I actually did really like the writing and I really like the character work but I couldn't enjoy the book because I definitely felt like I had just jumped in the middle of a story and I was missing so many key things and so I just found myself not enjoying the story because it definitely felt like I picked up a middle book in a series. So I chalked it up to, you know what, you actually have to read these books in order but I'm never going to do that so it's fine. And then this year, the sixth book in the Wayward Children series became one of the six novella nominations and so I kind of had to read this again and I figured you know what I think I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and just read this entire series. Now granted I could always just read synopsis for these books but they're novellas they're short why don't I give it a try from book number one and see how I feel about this. I never thought that I was going to be filming this type of video I never thought I was going to be picking up these books and be reading from the beginning but here we are and I'm going to chronicle my journey on this. So either I'm going to, you know, be assured that I really don't like Portal Fantasy, even if it's well-written Portal Fantasy, or I might suddenly love this book series in which, you know, who am I as a reader? <laughs> so what I'm planning to do for this video specifically is I'm going to be reading books one through five of the Wayward Children series. Book six I'm not going to read in this video because I am going to be reading it for my Is It Worth the Hype Hugo 2022 novella nominations. So you guys will see my thoughts on that in a very non-spoilery kind of way. And technically I already read the fifth book last year, but I honestly don't remember any of it. So it feels like I'm going to be starting over from scratch. So I'll give you guys a very brief synopsis of this book series if you guys have never heard of it before. Um, we are essentially following Eleanor Westwood's Home for Lost Children. It's basically a kind of like boarding school set in our world for children who have come back from other worlds. So think of the children who went through the wardrobe in Narnia. So what happens to them after they come back to their original world and they're kind of displaced from their real worlds. So I believe that this school is essentially a place for children to kind of be able to go through the grieving process of coming back from these magical worlds and learning how to kind of like readjust to our real contemporary world um, and I guess their adventures. Um, from what I've heard because Michaela has read the series and she absolutely loves it and she kind of gave me a huge rundown for it and so from what she's told me the odd number books are basically set in our world and it follows the group of students that are at this boarding school and then the even number books 
are kind of like filler almost because we're following one or two of the characters um, from the main storyline and kind of their own stories of being in their worlds and these portals. So essentially half of these books should be set in our world and the other half should be set in these different fantasy worlds. So we'll get a nice little mixture here. Um, like I mentioned, I don't know how this video series is going to go. I, I have no idea. I'm excited but also terrified at the same time. Um, I'm thinking that this video is going to be taking roughly about a month for me to finish with all my thoughts just because I am going to be listening to these books as audiobooks throughout the month of July um, but I might have to carry some over into August and I'm also going to be reading the rest of my books for my July TBR and who knows what's going to happen in August but I will um, let you guys know how this is going and the next time you see me it'll probably be when I am halfway through or finishing the first book for the Wayward Children series so Hopefully this goes well. Hey guys, giving you guys a car update for the first book in the Wayward Children series. Um, so if you guys hear the like little sounds in the background, I had to leave my AC on because if not I will roast and die in this car. Um, but I finished the first book in the Wayward Children series. I finished Every Heart a Doorway and I really liked this book. I'm giving it 4.5 stars. I was just really unsure of how I was gonna feel about this series. As you guys know, I read the fifth one, didn't like it, but I also read the fifth book out of order, and so I knew it was gonna be like a little bit different going back and starting from the first book, and like, wow, who would have thought it? Reading a series from the first book is actually the way to go. So all the people who say that you can read this series out of order, no, you're lying. You're completely 100% lying. You need to read it in order. So the first book, we're following our main characters, like POV, Nancy. And I know that each book follows a different character. So for Nancy, she came from this world of basically the dead. And she really resonated with this world. I believe she was only in the world for, I think she was there for a couple years. But in our time, it was about six months. And so she was missing for six months. Um, so she gets sent to Eleanor's home um, because her parents are just really concerned that she was traumatized from being like a runaway for six months and they just want their daughter back. And Nancy is kind of coming to terms with the fact that she might never return to her world and is getting to learn everybody from this boarding school. And we as the readers are also learning more about these different portals and just kind of like the different I guess labeling systems for them but I really enjoyed this book like I always liked the writing style when I first read the fifth book um, and my main issue with why I didn't enjoy the fifth book was just because I was so confused and so I just wasn't enjoying it because I was confused but since we were getting it from the beginning and we were just learning so much about this world and all the different systems and everything like that I enjoyed my time tremendously reading this book. And it's interesting because I thought that this book series was adult. And it's actually YA, but it's also kind of like the author says that it's for all ages. Um, even though majority of the characters are teenage age, you know, like between, I want to say like 15 and 17. So you would think it's YA, but it does have a lot of like very mature content, but it also just feels really inclusive. And it just has this wonderful, magical sense so I can understand why these books are so popular now I, I get it I get it and I enjoyed the first book a lot so I'm excited I'm gonna pick up the second book like tomorrow it's I think I'm really enjoying this I'm, I'm quite surprised but yeah I really like it hey guys um so it's finally a much cooler day for me to film um, it's been crazy crazy hot where I live the last couple of days like it's it's been insane but it's finally like pretty good enough weather so I don't feel like I am melting in this room and I've been having to have the AC blasting the last couple days which my electric bill is not going to be happy with me. But anyways, let's talk about the second book in the Wayward Children series. So I managed to read Down Among the Six and Bones and I'm really really surprised but I'm giving this five stars. I absolutely love this book so much. Like it's perfect like even from the very beginning where it's being more of like a narrative style where it's going through the history of Jack and Jill like how they were growing up and who they were as individuals before they went into the portal and how that basically like affects 
all the decisions they make and you really get to understand the characters from the first book um, because now we're going into their past and kind of like diving deeper into that. And I love the fact that the second book, this one really could be read separately. <laughs> so it feels like the odd number books, like the first, third, fifth, like all of them kind of follow the similar characters from book one and they have like a storyline that continues on. Book two could be read separately, but the story does continue. So like I would read other installments. But anyways, we're following Jack and Jill and them growing up. And this book is such an interesting take on the opinion that not all adults should be parents. Um, because Jack and Jill's parents should have never had kids. They basically had kids because they were jealous of the other people in high society that kept getting attention for having children and they wanted to not only fit in with the other people around them but have like better kids you know like more well-behaved kids smarter kids prettier kids and so for the most selfish reasons ever they wanted to have children um and then they basically took the twins and tried to mold them into like these perfect little beings and made one of them be like the sporty tomboy and make the other one be like the pretty princess and kind of establish what their characters traits should be before they were even born. And it kind of went against like their individualistic natures and they never really got a choice and how they were raised and like any any type of autonomy whatsoever. They were told what their favorite hair hairstyle should be. They were told what their favorite colors should be. They were told who they should be friends with and what activities they should do and how they should behave and how they should have to be different from each other. And so it definitely brought a lot of animosity between the twins and explains their kind of rocky relationship as sisters and also explains why they made the choices they did and why they went down the roads that they did. Um, so this book was so interesting and I had such a good time listening to it. It's definitely been like my most enjoyable of all the books I've read so far um, and I think that might be the case moving forward I don't know but I really really like this book so I'm surprised by how much I'm liking this series and like am I totally gonna eat my words by the end of this and like fall in love with this book series like who am I <laughs> hey guys so I'm popping in here to talk to you guys about beneath the sugar sky which is the third book in the wayward children series so I finished this one and I didn't really like this one as much as the other two. Um, this one's definitely my least favorite. So in this one, because it's an odd number, we're back at the Wayward um, House. And so we're technically like in the contemporary world. Um, and we're with some of the children that we met from the first book. Um, however, this one is more of a quest story. Um, so we have a character who is the daughter of someone from the first book and um, she's coming from her mother's land um, but time traveling is a thing and so at this point she's like 16 but her mom would be the same age as her and so she's coming from the future and she's traveling through the different portals and she's basically needing their help in order to help her land um, and I don't want to say like how exactly she needs their help because it would be spoilers from the first book um, but she needs their help and so then it's a group of kids it's Cade, um, Christopher and we meet two new characters Cora and Nadia and so all of them are going together on this quest um, and they're going through all the different um, portals to all these different lands and uh, for me that's kind of like the the cheesy part of portal fantasy that I don't like is kind of the whole like questing through different worlds um, because we don't really get to learn about the worlds that well because we're just jumping through them really quickly um, and then the tone for this one was definitely a little bit younger especially since the one land that we were in the longest was a nonsense world and I've realized through reading this series that I like logic worlds and I don't like nonsense worlds. Um, and so for me it was a world that was entirely made out of candy and so it was just it was not my thing so I didn't really enjoy them being there in that world and kind of just like jumping through all the different worlds. Um, the plot itself was fine and the characters were great as always and the writing was spectacular. Um, 
so yeah you know what actually let me let me fix that I love the characters and I love the writing but it was the plot that I just wasn't enjoying it was just not my cup of tea so I think ultimately I'm gonna give this book 3.5 stars um, yeah but I do want to continue the series and hopefully it doesn't go on the same path because the first two books were so good so we'll see <laughs> Hey guys, um, so I wanted to come in here and talk about the fourth Wayward Children series books, which was In an Absent Dream. Um, so in this one we are following a main character called Lundy that was previously introduced to us in book one. Um, and this is their story of when they went through the portal when she was a little girl and kind of her going to the goblin market. So I was very hesitant going into this book. Um, we did briefly meet the character in book one, but we didn't really get a chance to know the character that well. They haven't appeared in book two or book three. Um, and so I kind of felt like this was a pretty random choice to make. But I did like the fact that it was at least a character that we knew vaguely of. And we kind of already knew the ending of her story. And so it still didn't take away from the enjoyment of the book. And I ended up liking it more than I thought I was going to. So with this one, we're following um, the main character, Lundy, as she goes to the goblin market. And it's a very interesting circumstance because unlike the other books um, and the other children and their portals, they went to the portal world, came back, and then they're basically kind of stuck in their regular world and wanting to go back to their fantastical world. Um, Lundy with the goblin market basically she gets a choice of where she wants to stay and so she is allowed to kind of go back and forth through the goblin market and then back to her world um, and so we kind of see like her choice as she's kind of living a double life between her regular life with her human family and all of the other like found family that she has in the goblin market and just kind of like her choice behind all of this. So um, yeah, like I mentioned, I liked this one more than I thought I was going to and I decided to give it um, 4.5 stars. I think I kind of liked it almost at an equal level from book one, even though this one is like closer to the premise of book two in terms of like the narrative story format. So even though it's really different from book one, I think enjoyment wise, they're pretty much on the same level. So they are kind of tied for me. And yeah, I'm happy that I read this one. So now I just have the final book to read for this series and I am excited because so far I have been enjoying it and I know that the fifth book we're going to go back to Jack and Jill and I love those two so really excited to get started with that and I will keep you guys up to date. Hey guys, so I'm here to give you guys my thoughts on the fifth book of the Wayward Children series and also to wrap up this video. So the fifth book was Come Tumbling Down. Technically this is the one that I had read before but I didn't remember anything really from this book and so it really felt like I was reading it for the first time. And so originally I had rated this book three stars but I decided to just ignore that past rating and you know start all over as if I was reading it for the first time. Um, and so my overall star rating for the first time reading this book is going to be a 4.5. So I definitely did enjoy this book a lot. So in terms of ranking for the Wayward Children series, um, I'm putting book number five in second place. So book two is still reigning supreme as the only five star for the novellas that I've read so far for the series and it's definitely my favorite so far and I have a hard time believing that there's a book that can top that one from the series but book number five definitely came to a close second it was a 4.5 and it still followed the main characters that you saw in book two so it makes sense that I liked it as much as I did and then um, books one and four are still tied um, they also have 4.5 rating but they're both tied third now at this point and then last is definitely book three um, it's a 3.5 but that one I, yeah, I just didn't enjoy it as much as the other books. So in terms of Come Tumbling Down, um, we're still following Jack and Jill and we're actually kind of concluding their storyline. So since it is an odd number book, we're back at the Wayward Home for the children and we get to see Jack and Jill's characters reappear once again. And this time they bring some of the central characters from the previous novels back to their world um, for another quest. So this one kind of had the same recipes as book number three, which I didn't like. However, it had the Moors, which is a more logical world that we're going into. 
which I liked as a better backdrop. And on top of that, we were continuing a storyline that we had already developed from two other books and concluding it. And it had my two favorite characters, which were Jack and Jill, because their storyline so far has been my favorite out of all the characters. And so I ended up really, really enjoying this book. I think overall for this series, I am surprised by it, honestly. Like I'm really surprised by it because I, I don't think it ended up being what I was expecting. It ended up being better than what I was expecting. Um, it also ended up being like deeper and more nuanced. And I also was a little bit confused of how this book series was listed for all ages instead of like a YA audience or an adult audience. It usually feels when authors put it for that wide age demographic that they just don't know where to place their own book or publishers don't know how to market the books. But in this case, it truly is a book series that does fit all ages. Like this book series is really good for the middle grade and YA audience because the main characters um, are in that age range. And so I feel like teenagers can really relate to these characters. The cast of characters is extremely inclusive and diverse and I feel like is represented really well. And like teenagers need to see more positive influences of characters that are like them that are not the typical mainstream type of characters. And at the same time, it, I feel like it's also really good stories for adults because adults can relate and feel like this nostalgic feeling of like how they thought when they were kids and how they thought when they were teenagers. And at the same time, I feel like as an adult, because I'm, I'm almost 28, and so I'm at this point really um, separated now from my teenage years and my childhood years. And I definitely feel more like a cranky adult that wants, you know, to yell at the kids to get off my porch. And <laughs> I've migrated to that point of my adulthood life. Um, and I don't really have that connection or relatability with children and teenagers. They, they feel like foreign <laughs> creatures to me because I forgot almost kind of what it was to be at that age. And reading this book series has been so kind of insightful to that because it reminds me of what it's like to be a kid and to deal with the day-to-day -day kid things and then seeing these kids and their experiences and why they choose to go to the portals because of their experiences here in our human contemporary world. On top of that, I feel like as adults, we often forget kind of like, what it's like to be a kid and kind of the, the struggles of growing up and not being treated like with respect or as if you have your own autonomy because often case a lot of the parents and other adult figures in these series when we're talking about like the kids backstories they had good intentions they they loved their children but it's almost like they didn't understand them they kind of dismissed them they didn't give them credit for being able to make any decisions for themselves and you know i feel like that kind of resonates with me because i often forget that kids are smart and the kids are really insightful and the kids know more about what's going on that you give them credit for and that they should have I guess more rights and respects that often adults kind of ignore them for. And I feel guilty of that too because like I think that was part of it when I was a teacher that there was a huge disconnect between me and my students. I was 24, 25 when I was teaching and my students were 11 through 14 and I didn't think the age gap was that big compared to like their other teachers that I knew were in their 40s and 50s, but it really felt like we were living in two different worlds. And I think I forgot what it's like to deal with like the day-to-day -day teenage drama and the just nuances that goes with growing up and trying to discover yourself and your identity. So I really like what this series made me think. <laughs> it made me think of what it was like to be a kid and it made me kind of like reflect on how I view kids and teenagers nowadays and it was really nice to be able to read this as an adult and I feel like I would have enjoyed it also as a teenager um, but it was really nice to read it as an adult and I'm kind of really glad I read the series because it kind of opened my mind a little bit um, about a lot of topics and a lot of ideas and most importantly I think I'm gonna have to start reconsidering my views on contemporary and portal fantasy because lo and behold we found a series that I absolutely loved and it had all of the fantasy tropes that I say that I don't like but I ended up liking it so 
maybe I need to give some more portal fantasies a try in the future and okay so sorry I kind of rambled there at the end I just really enjoyed my time reading this series and I, I'm really surprised that I liked it so much and I found that out of all the different video series that I've been working on um, with different types of books this series was the series that I was the most excited to keep coming back and reading like I was reading other romance books and I was reading other sci-fi novellas and I was reading adult fantasy books for all these different videos that I'm working on at the same time but I found myself constantly gravitating towards wanting to pick up these audiobooks because there was a sense of familiarity with them where I knew what I was expecting going into it. I knew the writing was going to be good. I knew it was going to hit home. I knew I was going to have an emotional connection to these stories or these characters and that I was going to enjoy my time reading these books. So definitely this video was a huge success. I love the fact that I'm into this book series now and I don't even care if it's basic to like it or if it's like popular or whatever. I, I enjoyed myself. So I'm actually going to be picking up the sixth book in this series because it is part of the Hugo novella nominations for 2022. Um, I know the seventh book is out but I'm actually not going to pick it up yet because I have a feeling it's going to be nominated for the Hugo Awards the following year so I'll pick it up then. But yeah I'm really excited to continue with this series and I, I feel like I'm going to be sad when it's over. Alright guys if you like this video please be sure to give me a likes and thumbs up comment down below if you guys have read the wayward children series and what were your thoughts what were also your favorites and least favorites from the series so far and as always if you guys are enjoying my bookish content please be sure to subscribe for some more i'm millie thank you guys for jumping into the nook bye